one last example just to show you how the REST API works. Uh, we'll not go through the code of it, but it's another example that's provided by uh, Ryu, and you can find the complete documentation for it on a link. Yeah, just just Google it, Google it, and you'll find it. So it kind of sets up a network like this. So you have three devices that you want to act as routers. You have three hosts connected like this. These are the these are your um, uh, subnets th that you're using. And and yeah, so in uh, and as I said before, instead of using the routing algorithms, you we're using the REST API to configure it. Okay, so. run that example um, I've written a small topology script over here which creates the same topology as as shown in this in this figure here so you the topology simply creates switches and then it adds host and at this point since we're using a different IP address range for all of them so we set the IP using uh, the IP argument and then we set the default route which would be the default gateway that will be installed on the host. Okay, and then we add the links and that's it. So, the topo, uh, so we load the custom file and we call, uh, we call the topo command and use the my topo that we just created. Okay, that will create the network. The next thing is to configure the REST routers uh, and they're done using REST API. Okay, So the way REST API works is it um, in, in Rio is that you have a web server running on, on top of your controller uh, and that's using the web server gateway interface WSTI you will find that in the code if you look at it and what you do is you uh, you call the curl command to send some message to that server and as an example over here what we're doing is we're sending it at this particular link uh, with this particular link which is uh, local host and 8080 is where i told you the server is running and the router and then dpid so th this is a format that's defined in the rest router uh, code right so you can define whatever you want for yourself and the message here is address with the uh, with the IP address that you want these particular ports to have okay so that that's the curl command and you you can I'll just copy paste them here Sorry about that. We have to start, of course, we have to start the Ryu application. Um, and we have to set the controllers to, to remote so it can listen to that particular application. Okay, so there we are. Now when we send this command curl, you can see in the REST API of the router that it received that message, okay? So it received the message and it responded with a certain message that you can see here. The result is success, destination, uh, the detail is that you added an address, right? So that's kind of what you will do if you're building an application on top of a controller. You'll communicate with it with that application uh, using the REST API, you will send some commands and you will receive some commands. So if you, uh, whatever you are doing would be along those lines. At the controller side, when it, when it receives this command, it takes an action. In this case, the action would be to configure the switch to have a certain IP address, right? So, so in this particular example, we'll have to configure all the switches now of course you can automate it if you want uh, 
Um, you can see that all of them are getting a success response and that's because the controller is able to configure the switches right so if you okay so with these with all these commands we added an address to the ports of the switches that we have uh, routers in this case we are using them as routers so the next thing we are doing is configuring the default routes for each router right so the uh, the way REST router has defined it is using a message with gateway. Again, if you're writing your own code, you will you will do it. You will define a message in uh, in your own format. This is this is not a standard format. The only thing standard here is to use the curl command and then use the post or get, whichever you have. So we configured the hosts as well. Uh, sorry, we configured the gateways as well. We still haven't added a static route to it. So if I perform a ping all at this point, you can see that um, it's not able to configure the whole network accordingly. But anyways, I'll just add the final entry here as well. Okay, so if you look at it now, so we have all the entries set up, everything added using the REST API, and finally we're able to ping the network, uh, ping, ping between all the hosts. Okay, and uh, the way it's acting is, uh, the, the, the three switches in the between, they're acting as routers, uh, and, and we can confirm that by looking at the entries that that are in uh, installed at the switches and the command to do do that using mininet is you just use dpctl and dump flows uh, dump flows so that gives you the entries the fl uh, the routing uh, the forwarding entries that are installed on each switch okay so as an example if you look at switch one we can see that there are different entries added here uh, some of the actions that are taken is to decrement ttl value that's something that a router does a standard router would do that and then it modifies the destination MAC address and the source address. So you can see those actions in here. And then you can see the forwarding action, which is to output the message at a certain port, kind of like what we saw before. But uh, before we saw it using the source and MAC addresses, now we can see it using the network addresses.